So in his essay concerning human understanding, John Locke made a distinction between what he calls primary and secondary qualities um, of objects in relation to our perception. Um, primary qualities are the really real qualities. Um, if we're talking about an apple, the size, shape, motion, etc. Um, of the object are primary. The color, the texture, the taste are secondary. They are produced by the subjectivity of the observer. Um, they do not exist independent of that subjective perceptual experience. Um, so, you know, you carry this this distinction forward a few hundred years and you come to contemporary philosophy of mind and we've got this problem now. It's called the hard problem of consciousness and taking the apple as an example, the question is basically um, how does the electromagnetic radiation reflected off of the shape of the apple become red? How is the redness related to the powers of the object or the electromagnetic radiation that's in the real world? Um, and when we construe the question in this way, it's damn near impossible to answer, which is why it's called the hard problem. And because it's seemingly impossible to answer, I think we have to go back to Locke's original distinction and ask if it is really a legitimate description, a distinction to make. Um, so let's look at this apple again. Can you distinguish the shape of the apple from its redness? And you may think, you know, in order to preserve Locke's distinction here, that, well, yeah, I can. I can draw a line around the edges of the apple and see that independently of its color. But, but now, that's not what Locke was suggesting. Locke was saying that in our immediate experience, uh, the shape and the color are distinguishable. Um, that act of, of drawing a line around the edge of, of the apple, though, is a conceptual abstraction on our part. In other words, it's part of our subjective uh, perceptual activity. It's not in the object as we immediately perceive it. As we immediately perceive it, the redness and the shape are identical. We see the whole apple, redness, shape, and all. Um, and so, our immediate experience is not broken into these two different categories. We actually need to go through a rather involved process of imagination and, and conceptualization in, in order to separate off the redness from the shape of the apple. As directly experienced, there is no separation. The redness defines the boundary of the apple. Um, and, you know, once we've, we've done this, we've recognized the hard problem of consciousness as being um, a necessary sort of implied dead end which was made necessary by this distinction between primary and secondary qualities um, and we go back and ask these questions again about how we directly experience objects um, it seems that we cannot make these distinctions unless we perform these, these abstract subjective operations on our sensations. In other words, what we immediately sense is not broken up into primary and secondary qualities. Um, and so we see that the hard problem of consciousness is not a problem um, because the apple is red. It's not my subjectivity that creates the red. No, the apple is red. Um, 
And certainly there are other complications which arise in you know the scientific way of understanding reality once we've done this, once we've um, reconnected the redness to the real apple. Um, and we'll have to get into that in other videos, I guess. But uh, I'm just curious to see how this works out in uh, everybody else's mind, if, if this these lines of reasoning are accurate. So um, let me know.